Hello friends, last week in my video, we saw how the market was basically uh, gearing up for expiry and it was a shorter week uh, uh, because of a holiday and what we saw was that short weeks typically tend to favor bulls and in the expiry process, rollovers and uh, squaring up, especially of shorts, do cushion the downsides. That is something I mentioned in my weekly alignment column as well. Now, is the new year, especially January, going to be as rewarding to the bulls as December has been? Because what we see in the month of December were spectacular returns uh, as far as uh, the Nifty and the Bank Nifty are concerned. So the Nifty gained 7.94% and the Bank Nifty gained 8.57%. I'm talking about the spot segment on a month on month basis. And these kind of gains, monthly gains were the best ever after July 2022. Now that means you're uh, seeing the biggest one month rally after one and a half years. Is this kind of performance maintainable? Are we going to see this kind of a jump in uh, January uh, in the headline indices, especially uh, the broader based markets? I want to discuss that in this video in addition to our weekly uh, uh, studies as well. Now friends, what I have seen over the last uh, uh, couple of decades and I've been trading these markets since 1986. FII's of course came in the 1990s. What we have seen as and this is my personal uh, uh, viewpoint. You may feel free to differ with it. Of course, what I have seen is that local investors come brokers tend to warehouse means stock up shares that they feel FII's would be interested in buying in the coming year. FII's typically and more so now in 2023 are expected to raise their allocation means the amount segregated for investment into India. They are expected to raise their investments in India in 2024. So they stick to quality stocks, they stick to highly liquid stocks and they tend to stick with industry leaders and frontline companies. That, that's not very difficult to guess. So uh, uh, typically local investors and brokers tend to warehouse or garner corner these shares in anticipation of selling to the FII's at higher prices. But the FII's are smart. They've adapted. They've smelt which way the winds are blowing. So what they do is they come in the month of January in the first week of January and they'll announce to you that our allocation to India is indeed going to be higher. But that does not mean that they start buying from 1st of January itself. They could buy from Feb, they could buy from June, they could buy from July, whenever. The allocation is raised, but it's not time bound. It is raised for the entire calendar year. So what the FII's tend to do is basically tire out the local bulls by holding back their investment sub decision. And what really happens is, that people who've got greedy and warehouse these stocks, they have to pay a cost of carry. There is cost of money called interest. There's mark to market, there's rollover cost, etc. And these beginning to wear out a, a, a short term weak hand and the weak hands invariably tend to surrender uh, their positions and in, in first uh, signs of duress. So in January, I do expect that the rally that you saw in December of seven and a half and eight and a half percent in the indices may be fairly difficult to achieve. Overall, yes, the month might be bullish, but should you expect uh, easy money on uh, your long positions? I think uh, uh, that would be stretching it a little too much. Friends, the uh, 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 contentious issue of uh, January's outlook as compared to December out of the way. Let's now go back to our usual uh, game plan and uh, uh, coming up on your screen is the weekly market roundup window. What you are seeing is the broader based Nifty 50 has led the way forward and gained more than the bank Nifty. The US dollar index has fallen 33 basis points yet again and uh, that basically has been positive for emerging markets including India. It also boosted gold prices but uh, silver uh, witnessed some amount of profit taking at higher levels. 
oil and gas fell i have been telling you that i don't subscribe to the uh, 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 super cycle theory in commodities and there you are higher levels are encountering selling pressure the uh, usd inr which is the dollar versus the rupee gained nine basis points that tells you that the rupee weakened against the dollar a little bit and the indian 10-year benchmark bond yield fell one basis point which means bond prices rose very very marginally and that was positive for bank nifty mwpl or market wide positions limits came down by 9.37 uh, uh, that that's routine because we saw expiry of december series us uh, uh, headline indices rose but uh, the gains were not really very spectacular but they did provide tailwinds to our domestic markets Friends, the weekly market roundup done. I now come to our in-house indicators. I begin with market wide position limits or MWPL. Now MWPL is the extent of positions utilized by uh, traders as compared to uh, what is allowed by SEBI. Now what we've seen is that MWPL peaked out at 39.01 in the December uh, uh, derivative series and that was lower than uh, the November uh, high of 39.38. Fair enough, um, it was a holiday season, so we can grant it a little bit of leeway. Now what you're seeing is the uh, post expiry low at 29.63 is still higher than uh, uh, November's uh, post expiry low of 29.36. That means uh, by and large, Bulls are still holding on to their positions rather than squaring them up in uh, very large numbers on expiry days. So risk appetite, I would say, still remains uh, uh, present in the market. It's steady. I don't see any signs of panic. Now for the turnover in the index and stock futures. Remember, these are three concurrent series. So it is uh, January, February and March. What you are seeing in spite of the rollover, which should have seen higher turnover because you square up in December, you roll over the position in January. So double turnover is long. But in spite of that, turnover in the index futures has fallen. In the stock futures, it has risen. The fact that uh, people are rolling over less of index futures and uh, more of stock futures in a way is telling you that they are going in for higher risk appetite uh, uh, instruments because uh, stock futures are more volatile. But I would have preferred index uh, uh, futures uh, turnover also to rise. So this is one aspect I would watch. Now friends, for the advanced decline ratio, which after the price itself is the most leading indicator and uh, it tells you which way the winds are blowing. In spite of the fact that the Nifty ended the week with 1.79% gains as compared to little over half percent loss in the prior week, the advanced decline ratio actually eased a little bit at 1.13. That means for every 100 losers, there were only 113 gainers as compared to 147 gainers in the prior week. But like I said, it was a holiday uh, uh, shortened week due to Christmas and New Year. So let's give it a benefit of the doubt and uh, watch the advanced decline ratio keenly. I put it up on my social media accounts late at night every day. Friends, I now come to the prompt month futures basis of the Nifty and the Bank Nifty. Now basis is nothing but the premium or discount enjoyed uh, by the futures over spot. What I'm seeing is that the Bank Nifty basis is the highest in the 20 weeks covered by this chart and so is the bank nifty and nifty's basis bank nifty basis at 336 and nifty basis at 155 i've not seen these levels for many many quarters that means that traders have actually paid 336 rupees premium in the future compared to spot for bank nifty and almost 155 rupees premium on futures compared to spot for the nifty 50 can this big basis uh, uh, basically continue I think it will not. Like options are, uh, are premium, the closer you get to expiry, the smaller is the premium because it is a decaying asset. I do expect the basis to come down fairly quickly in the coming week itself. 
But as long as the basis remains positive, which means the futures premium is uh, uh, positive and futures are trading above spot, bulls still have a fighting chance and they are still in control. Friends, I now come to our in-house uh, indicator, which you've trusted for almost three years now, our impetus indicator you won't find anywhere else on the internet. And what you are seeing is that the gains in both the indices was accompanied by rising impetus readings, which means the rally was forceful. It was on higher momentum and that if it follows up in the coming week should see indices going up for higher levels. I put up the impetus levels on our social media accounts every night. So do connect with me there. Friends, I now come to the LWTD indicator for which I have received a lot of uh, affection and warm words from my online family. Thank you very much. And uh, this exclusive indicator tells me that uh, 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 the Nifty having logged 1.79% gains, it was accompanied by LWTD, which is the highest in the 20 week period chart. Do remember how the LWTD was positive at 0.33 in the prior week itself. And based on this LWTD, I told you that last week I expected the markets to go up. Of course, it was coupled with expiry as well. But the LWTD is indicating a lot of buying support pent up in the pipeline. So lower levels are going to see a lot of concerted buying. I update the daily LWTD on my social media accounts as well. Please do connect with me there. Friends, the in-house indicator is done. I now come to a market that's very close to my heart and I have been pioneering uh, watching this market as compared to my contemporaries ahead of the equities because I feel the bond market or the uh, debt market actually funds and fuels the prices of other asset classes. The weekly chart on your screen of the Indian 10 year benchmark bond yield tells you that uh, uh, the uh, bond yields have fallen last week. Of course, uh, the table told us that it was a decline of one basis point and uh, uh, the month long moving average itself is telling you that uh, uh, the uh, bond yields are under pressure. Now, I had told you uh, in 2021 that we should be laddering yields and we've done that successfully. We've laddered all the way up to uh, 7.4, 7.5, 7.6 and we've locked in spectacular returns. But I had promised you that uh, I would give you a way out and uh, something that's going to be e even uh, more spectacular where returns are concerned by way of guilt funds. Now on 14th of December, my online family saw a, a very abrupt and rapid recommendation into four leading guilt funds. You see their names on your screen right now. And how have they performed? Look at the way they performed from uh, uh, the date of recommendation. By the way, they have never seen a negative weekly close ever since I recommended these guild funds. So it's been three weekends and you've seen week on week gains. So this is uh, uh, the kind of work that we do with our in-house uh, statistical and behavioral trading models, Ibex and Barracuda respectively. So we are basically uh, building the best uh, 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 complete uh, uh, trading models which will look after equities, commodities, currencies and uh, uh, even uh, the debt market. So I'm not done yet. Just when you think that uh, uh, deploying in these guild funds is the be all and end all of the fixed income story. Sorry, there are lots more aces up my sleeve and I'll be sharing these on uh, uh, my uh, free telegram channel. Do connect with me. My contact coordinates come at the fag end of this video. Friends, the bond market's done. I now come to the bank nifty. And as you can see on the daily chart on your screen, this uh, uh, bank nifty uh, index rose 1.69% on a weekly basis and gained on three out of four trading sessions last week. The price is above its month long moving average, which itself is turning upwards, which means the short term outlook remains positive. Since a fortnight or more, I've been telling you about the throw over and throw under concept on the nifty. I mean, the bank nifty wedge formation, how the prices went below the wedge as a throw under. And I told you they would be 
followed by a throw over means exceeding the high of the wedge formation trend line there it did it consolidated just as I told you it would and now there appears to be an attempt to break out above this all in all it is a promising picture now the uh, weekly chart on your screen tells you that the price has closed again higher than the bullish wedge formation uh, top uh, trend line it's also above the 25 week exponential moving average which is a six month long holding on cost of an average bull which tells me that even the medium term outlook is positive for now friends in the week before last uh, this index bank nifty index was at number three on the most volatile counters list based on the statistical beta ranking that we maintain in-house and uh, it slipped one notch to number four and uh, that does not tell you that uh, the volatility of the bank nifty has come down rather the relative volatility of the stock futures has gone up which uh, uh, has uh, seen the ranking of bank nifty come down it's still uh, going to be fairly challenging for a retail trader to trade this index last week i advocated an estimated range between 48675 on the upside and 46300 on the downside it held wonderfully well to the extent that the high of uh, uh, the week was 48,636, just 39 points below the uh, estimated resistance. In the coming week, I expect the estimated range between 49,475 on the upside and 47,125 on the downside. Friends, I would uh, uh, suggest you still refer to our daily, weekly and monthly uh, index pivot levels, commodity pivot levels for uh, gaining a better advantage over the others where intraday swing trades and even buy and hold trades are concerned. They are on our free telegram channel. Make use of this feature, please. Friends, the bank nifty done. I now come to the nifty 50, which gained 1.79% on a weekly basis and it gained on three out of four trading sessions just as the bank nifty did the price is above its month-long moving average as you can see on the daily chart on your screen and the moving average itself is trending higher so that means the uh, uh, short-term outlook is positive for now last week i advocated a fibonacci level of 21,450 as a level to watch and we've basically been monitoring this level since a fortnight or so We've overcome this uh, 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 Fibonacci resistance level. So now in the absolute near term, it will become a de facto support level. The weekly chart on your screen tells you that the price is above the uh, Fibonacci uh, uh, short term uh, uh, Fibonacci ruler level of 261.8 at 21450. And the long term Fibonacci ruler is now at uh, 22,200 where it's 261.8% uh, percent, uh, extension is concerned. Now this level is something I told you even uh, last week as a uh, uh, potential target in the coming few weeks. Since uh, the price is uh, significantly higher than the 25 week exponential moving average, there could be a possibility of a routine correction. I'm using the word routine correction. That should be noted and kept in mind as well. Friends, in the week before last, this index was number 10 on our most volatile counters list as per the statistical beta ranking we maintain in-house. It uh, rose one notch to number nine, which means uh, uh, the volatility went up and so can uh, the challenge level for a retail investor. Last week, I advocated an estimated range between 21,800 on the upside and 20,900 on the downside. And look at where the spot Nifty has uh, uh, fallen from 21,801 level, just one point away from Ibex's estimated resistance level. So I'm very pleased to tell you that we are more than nine times right out of 10 where uh, these weekly ranges are concerned and the process of fine tuning our in-house statistical model still continues. It can only get better with time. The coming week, I estimate a range between 22,175 on the upside and 21,300 on the downside. 
Please do continue to watch our daily, weekly and monthly pivot levels which are on our free telegram channel. It will definitely give you an edge over other traders. Friends, before we move forward, I come to the last bit of derivative analysis, statistical analysis based on the uh, turnover by uh, retail traders in uh, the four uh, segments of the derivative market. Coming up on your screen is uh, the weekly chart of this uh, constituents uh, turnover. What you are seeing is uh, uh, in the uh, futures segment, the index futures contributed four basis points more in terms of turnover footprint, which is given as a blue line. The stock futures turnover was higher by 25 basis points. It's shown as a red line. Now futures require higher margin and more volatile than options and they also require mark to market. The fact that futures turnover is higher tells you risk appetite was higher but futures turnover is also higher because of expiry because people uh, uh, square up in December and reinitiate the positions in Jan. But the fact that their turnover is higher that means they are rolling over more which also means that uh, risk appetite is good. Now let's see what happened in the option segment. In the lowest risk options of index uh, uh, type, the ter derivative turnover contribution fell by 0.30%. And there was a one basis point increase in stock options turnover, which is shown as a purple line. Net net, I would say that risk appetite has actually remained firm. It has remained uh, cheerful. And as long as follow up buying comes, the market should uh, uh, favor the bulls more. Do remember I told you two points. FIIs may not come and press the buy button on 1st of January itself and the big gap between the nifty uh, on the weekly chart and the 25 week exponential moving average tells you that some corrective uh, uh, routine profit taking might just be expected. Nothing to worry about. It's the usual stuff. Friends, I now come to my own uh, trading strategy in the week ahead, what I would do. PSUs, public sector undertakings, would remain on my gun sights. Hey, as long as something works, why fix it? Don't change a winning formula. It's been working for us and we continue with it. My hypothesis that uh, oil marketing companies would uh, see declines in their share prices if oil market oil prices rose was exactly on the ball and what you saw on Friday was steep declines in uh, HPCL, BPCL and IOC. If oil prices rise further, oil marketing company stocks may be under pressure uh, in the coming week as well. I'm holding on to cash or dry powder as we call it where fixed income is concerned. I'm not deploying any more in the, in the sovereign bond market nor in the guilt uh, 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 avenue. I will update my free telegram channel first, foremost and always. Majority, I'm not talking of majority, sorry, I'm talking of all. All our work will always be uploaded first on our free telegram channel and then uh, elsewhere, if at all. So do connect with me on our telegram channel. I will tell you when I'm, uh, I'm deploying fresh money into the fixed income markets. In the commodity space, I will uh, uh, continue to seek uh, theta decay opportunities in the non-linear options segment in energy. As far as linear strategies are concerned, I would uh, basically aim for going short uh, in uh, futures if oil and gas prices were to rise very rapidly. I would seek short opportunities. And that too, it would be in the mid or uh, far month uh, series, not in the prompt series. Base metals are showing signs of having uh, run up sharply in the last week or two and there might be some amount of consolidation or maybe even some routine profit taking. If that comes in, you might just see some amount of consolidation even in the stocks of these base metal companies. Where bullion is concerned, um, I expect uh, the lower levels to likely see buying support emerge and therefore, I'm not uh, uh, favoring uh, short sales in bullion unless uh, you're extremely, extremely aggressive as a trader. The other aspect uh, uh, which I noticed last week thanks to IBEX was that commercial vehicle companies uh, uh, saw their stock prices rise smartly. They were market outperformers in the week gone by. Now, these stocks 
might see some more residual action in the week ahead. But volatility is likely to remain high. And what we are seeing is uh, uh, that markets uh, may not see the uh, same amount of uh, turnover because people need not come back on the 1st of January itself and start trading like usual. It might take a couple of days for people to come back from their holidays and uh, start providing the same amount of turnover. Do watch your snap code window for the bid and offer spreads. Any counter that has more than six ticks as a difference between the bid and offer prices, avoid. Those are high risk counters where ingress and egress could be fairly challenging for a statistical model trader. I would avoid these counters as well. Friends, before I sign out of this video, please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already done so. Click on the bell icon to receive instant alerts about fresh videos being put about here. In the comment segment, do let me know what you think of my work and how it has helped you become a better trader. Hey, I also need your help in this new year to reach out to a bigger audience. So I request you to share my video with family, friends, with your social media groups on WhatsApp and what other platform that you are on and help me reach out to a bigger, more knowledgeable audience. I thank you for your patience and being me, with me in this video till we meet again in my next. This is Vijay Bambani signing off. I wish you have a very, very, very happy new year and see you around in my next. Bye-bye.